a 15 minute design lecture if I get a screen. There we go. I have this new thing ever since I killed the battery, I get a very dramatic uh, like segue into full screen and out. Like it's very slow and beautiful. So I don't know what I did. I, kill, I completely killed the battery today just by leaving the computer on with the mouse plugged in. And it like killed it so much it reset the date. Um, it was weird. So uh, the project I'm gonna show is uh, this Corcoran News paper redesign uh, that I just, I guess I've done four issues now, so it's pretty fresh. Um, and the, the reason I'm showing it is because when Ariel was here, we talked a bit about the idea of like a strategic project where the design needs to kind of do something to push an organization or a business along. It might seem like that that's always the case, like that a design project always needs to communicate or always needs to be a compelling package for a book that makes someone buy it. But that's not really the case. Like with the soap factory, we just get the project and then go make the thing. And all anybody cares about is sort of like, are we telling the truth about the project? And is this like kind of interesting? Kind of interesting. Um, we don't go like, well, this doesn't feel very soap factory-ish and it's gonna confuse the consumer, blah, blah, blah. And or we never go like, you know what? Everything we're making is too Walker and not MoMA enough or something like that. Like those kind of conversations don't happen. We just make things and then agree upon them. Um, this project is a little bit different because we actually did have this sort of strategic um, idea uh, in, in conversation with them. So I'm gonna show, this is the newspaper Wow, that's really yellow, but this is the newspaper before we redesigned it. So super traditional community newspaper. Um, I think uh, the kind of concerns about it is like even though parts of it were bilingual, it looks very like kind of quaint and small townish. Like it's really traditional looking. Um, I think that the, we said it looked very like white homeowner. Like that's what it kind of felt like. It didn't feel like international, which it's in a neighborhood that's super diverse and is largely apartment buildings with tons of new immigrants and lots of languages being spoken. Um, so the, the feeling overall um, was that it needs to look, maybe it doesn't even need to look like a newspaper, but it needs to look like something that's interesting and that doesn't just look like a quaint, cute little newspaper. Um, the other consideration is that the newspaper is actually designed by the, stat, the office coordinator who's not a designer, it's just part of her job is for four days to basically edit, project manage, and design this thing. Um, so that kind of puts a damper on like what you can accomplish. Because like we've done four issues, but eventually I have to hand it over with templates and say like, have fun. Uh, so this is the initial idea presentation. The following slides are pages from what we showed them. Um, so the first thing was like this perspective of like what are we trying to do? So first is optimize the format to increase the likelihood that the paper will be opened, read, and understood. We'll continue to use the format of a newspaper, but should it feel like something else, a magazine or a poster, is the visual familiarity and obsolescence of a newspaper too easily ignored? Like, who reads these things? Like, I get these community newspapers on my door. It sits there till it gets yellow because I'm lazy, and then it goes like, I go around the house and recycle it. Because like, I don't take it seriously. I don't get this one, so I'm, I'm dissing someone else and it's okay. Um, and then second, find a visual language that serves to connect people with the content in an intentional way. So what do we want from the reader and how do we want them to feel about our newspaper? So the first strategy was to basically, uh, was this thing called hard news and it was basically like, let's keep it a traditional newspaper, let's just make it look like a really good contemporary traditional newspaper. Um, and so uh, we didn't actually design anything. I would just sort of make this brief little icon that says like, this looks like a serious newspaper. And then find images of like, what are the like, best well-designed newspapers around the world? And look for sort of um, uh, details about them that come across, like really clean kind of sight lines like you see in here, and then color blocking, and maybe a mix of like serif and sans serif typefaces, um, and a little less old typefaces. Um, and the feeling was that it will give the paper a greater sense of urgency and instill a sense of journalistic integrity in the reader. But the downside is that action-oriented articles, so a lot of the articles were actually not news stories. They're events that they want you to go to, but they looked like things that had happened in the past. 
So something would be, it would have a headline that said May 6th. If you saw it on May 7th, you would assume it was about something that happened on May 6th. It didn't give the sense of, there is this thing happening, we want you to go. It just looked like, oh, there's a community building workshop on May 6th, or there was one on May 6th. Um, so we felt like it's the potential is making it look even more like a newspaper would confuse people. Like They'd be even less likely to pick up on those, the differences. Um, and then this is just more kind of scrap. So really kind of, uh, I love like these really clean sight lines that you see through here. The second one was community news, same idea, still a traditional newspaper, um, but don't make it look serious at all because it's not actually a serious newspaper. Like there's a couple of like important things about housing issues, problem landlords, um, I don't know, stuff like that. But then largely it's about like things that are going on in the community and there's articles written by 12 year olds. So like it's not like serious hard hitting news. So make it look uh, brighter, softer and bolder. Um, so to get like kind of sillier typefaces, this is when we start to realize that maybe um, all process type foundry fonts would be the way to go and that yellow was near and dear to our heart. And then just sort of more scrap that we were looking at. So we've got kind of big fun type. Uh, the third one, which we were calling typographic, um, was the first one to kind of start to get away from a newspaper and to look at the idea of um, make every panel its own kind of page and work um, around the idea of like big clear type. And part of the motivation was that um, photography is totally a problem with designing this thing because like you get photographs embedded in Word documents that aren't big enough and you cannot possibly ask the kind of person who gives you that for the actual photo, right? The level of cluelessness is so high that it's like that ship has sailed. Um, or you like you have a lot of sort of crappy photos. So the idea was like, what if um, the whole thing is so typographically driven that the type just becomes images and it's always about being like super clear and really bold and kind of colorful. Sort of more stuff that we were looking at. And then the last one was called transparent. And it was based off the idea that we were, I was uh, analyzing one of the papers and found seven different types of content in it. So there was like news coverage, community action, which was like, here's a meeting about this thing that's important. There were columns by, you know, columnists, events, there was the farmer's market, there was news related to the organization that put out the newspaper, and then you had like resources related to like housing. Um, so the idea that, that I had was like, okay, what if the whole thing is actually imagined where every type of content is grouped on a page by itself with only that kind of content, and then every page looks like the type of content it is. So like a, um, the, the stuff that's events looks like a calendar, the stuff that's news looks like it's a newspaper, the stuff that is like super family oriented looks more like fun and postery, and the idea would be like each page would then become kind of like its own poster, and we had this other idea going along with that, which is that if, if there was something interesting, like an event you wanted people to know about, you could just pull the whole page out, fold it, and hang it up, and you'd have like essentially a series of posters or kind of broadsides um, to, to share, and that like each one is actually like has this kind of great thing, like you have a stack of five, you've got a whole bunch of like action-oriented materials. Um, let's look at it. So this was kind of looking at the idea of like, okay, so like here's a newspaper-y section, here's like a community uh, events type thing, here's a like calendar-ish stuff, and we're just like trying to imagine like this newspaper that's lots of different information. So uh, what happened was um, they were really excited about this idea um, because it was like the biggest departure from what they were doing and it got around a lot of issues where they were already kind of figuring out like that having one visual language for everything is confusing because it, it kind of says that everything is the same. Like, right, like if you make the whole thing look like a newspaper, then you're saying like every single piece of information in here is the same. Um, and uh, Eric, the executive director, was like, well, maybe this is really stupid, but what if the whole thing is just a calendar? You know, what if it's all just anchored by being a calendar? And then the articles kind of float around that, but the priority is based on like dates and like maybe every page is a week. And I was like, that's a brilliant idea. So what we ended up doing was taking this sort of transparent idea 
and some of the references from other things like the clean sight lines and looking at like, well, how would this work if it was a calendar? Um, so this was the next presentation. Um, so this is like just an analysis of the one of one issue. So like every pink post-it is an event. And it's crazy because like actually you're looking at stuff like this super long thing right here is actually telling you like this is important and you should go to this. But what it looks like is a super long policy discussion on developments. Um, this one like newsroom cafe to discuss local stories. You know what? One that sentence doesn't make sense, but two you're like it sounds like there's a cafe called a newsroom and they're gonna and. Um, uh, and they're going to discuss local stories. Like it's like unclear. So, um, but you can see like pretty much roughly half of the newspapers actually these events. Um, so the first layout was just to look at ways of organizing it. Um, so, figuring out breaking down the content. Like put all the farmers market stuff on one page. Have an article on the cover. We kind of stole this big color blocking idea from one of the other things we were looking at. Um, and then just basically go. Um, I think initially this was based on like a seven column grid and it was like week one or week two, week three and the idea was above the fold should be an event. The circle thing would always be the farmer's market because it happens twice a week and then articles would kind of float around it and then the back page would always be housing. And then um, you can see just kind of like bigger view of that. And uh, I don't think anything in this was like really final other than the idea of it's going to have really bold type and it's going to be huge. And then there's one really, really big one so you can kind of see it. And then the second one was this idea of a horizon line. So it's like since the farmer's market doesn't really change, let it run across the top. Uh, and if it has an event, you can call it out. But then like you just get to have these big, giant numbers. And basically each content type would get its own typeface, which I, I really love. So. And you can see it a little bit bigger there. And then just one giant view of like how that might work. So then this is the first full newspaper that we did. Um, so we did end up having like this sort of color panel on the cover. So basically like we get two page places where we can use full color. Um, and uh, there's these like kind of five typefaces it's funny because um, whenever I look at it on screen, like when I look at it in InDesign, I'm like, oh, it's so chaotic. There's so much going on. And once I'm actually looking at the newspaper, I'm like, oh, no, it's fine. It totally like, works just fine. Um, it's like one of those things where like, uh, you see it small, and it like, compresses it. And then you're looking at this big thing, and you're like, oh, no, it's, like it's got plenty of breathing room. Um, but pretty much a lot of these ideas came through. So we kept that like, um, uh, kind of horizon line thing for the farmer's market. And then these common lines for different events. And they all, basically, there's this really kind of simple system. It looks chaotic at first, but it's pretty simple. It's four typefaces, one for community organizing. It's like the most serious typeface, because it's like serious stuff. And then maple for family and kids, stratum for housing, because it's very structured. And then anchor for the farmer's market, because it's like kind of fun. Um, and then what happens within it is that an event gets the darkest weight of the typeface, and an article gets the lightest weight. And what that means is that you get these kind of cool things happening. So when you get three events next to each other, like you get these nice juxtapositions where just right off the bat, you know that this is different than this is different than this, almost like without even reading it. And then we try to incorporate these different little like call to action type boxes. The only thing is we didn't change the original grid, which is kind of frustrating. So we had to stick with the original five column grid and it, we hadn't yet embraced the idea of blank columns. Um, and then the other thing is that contrast gets like built into the system automatically because of the dark to, to light thing. So when you have an article in an event, you like automatically open up the page and there's like a gestalt thing happening, which I like. And then there's just all these little like kind of crazy lines running through it. Um, so these are the covers of every one that's been done thus far. Uh, the color thing is like hard to deal with. They're like, they're sort of based on sunsets or leaves changing. <laughs> it depends on the, the month and the mood I'm in. Um, but, uh, but it's already like nice as a kind of system. And then, uh, and then like the next issue, 
we didn't have enough content and started having blank columns and then realized the blank columns were awesome and that they were like this like secret gift from flaky people like who didn't send the stuff in that like the last minute you'd have like you'd realize you're not getting that article and then you had this blank column though we started always putting them in the middle which is even better and the other thing is that um i think at this issue we started embracing the idea of just letting things end where they end um it, one to make it easier for the like the volunteer that, or the staff coordinator that's going to design this, like with a traditional newspaper, they would push everything around until they had filled up that whole surface like a newspaper. And now the idea is like, no, I just do it in columns and then just kind of shift the, the width of them. But otherwise, like leave them alone. Don't worry about like having giant white space, like look at it as a little bonus for like less stuff to read. Um, and then the back cover, the housing resources thing gets treated as like kind of a very simple poster. Oh, thank you. All right.